Hi, this is Dr. Tom Falkenberry from Tarleton State University in the Department of Psychological Sciences. In this video, I want to show you how to quickly do a correlation. So I have gotten some data uploaded, and again, this is from video one and two, so I'm not going to explain it too much. But let's suppose that I wanted to take two of these variables and find out uh, how they're correlated, how they are associated with each other. The tab that is responsible, or the button of functions that is responsible for this is the regression button. So I'm gonna start by pressing the regression button, and I'll get several options, and I'm just gonna do a simple correlation matrix this time. I'm gonna stay away from the Bayesian stuff for this video. And we'll just go and select correlation matrix, and we get our pretty familiar um, dialog boxes up here. Now this is why in video one it is very important that you make sure all of your data uh, columns are of the right type because you'll notice that gender is not even appearing as anything I can do something with. That's because again gender is a nominal variable and it makes absolutely no sense to do a uh, correlation matrix with it. But my continuous variables I can certainly do something. So let's suppose that I wanted to look at the correlation between survey one and survey two. So I would highlight both of these and move them over to the box. And without checking any defaults down here, I get immediately everything that I need to know. In fact, I may get too much depending on what sort of information you're looking for. So let's look at the options downstairs and see if there's anything that we need additionally, anything we don't need. Um, first thing is anytime you're doing a correlation, it's a good idea to have a scatter plot. And JASP makes this very easy. If you look down here where it says plots, you can click correlation matrix and it will give you a very nice scatter plot. In fact, again, I've showed this in other videos, but if you go to this little triangle and say copy plot, then you can take that plot and put it right into Excel, or sorry, into something like Microsoft Word or any other software package, and uh, you've got a nice, uh, a very nice plot. Okay, In fact, nicer than most other software packages will produce, in my opinion. So there's that, so you can see um, there's a little bit of correlation here, but not much. It does go ahead and put a line of best fit through the uh, data, so that might be useful to you. <clears throat> now, uh, in fact, if you click on statistics here, it will give you all sorts of stuff there. So I'm going to leave that off for now and just have the plot. Now, what might be confusing if you're relatively new to statistics is when I did the correlation, it immediately gave me two numbers up here. And if you're not careful, you might report the wrong number if you're doing this for an assignment or something. So I want to be real careful about what these numbers are. It, what we're looking at is the Pearson's R and then the associated p-value. Now, many times in a statistics course, uh, the correlation is taught before the notion of p-values comes around. So if you're just doing a correlation, you can effectively ignore this p-value. In fact, you can, you can tell JASP to leave it out by simply unchecking the report significance bar on the left, and then you just get the, p, the, sorry, the, the Pearson's R-value. And you can report that now. That R-value is 0 0.094, and then you're done. If you are more advanced in your statistics course, you can report significance. Uh, and again, the p-value is what gives you that. If it was less than 0.05, of course, that would tell us that uh, this was a significant correlation. The fact that this p-value is 0.5, that tells us this is definitely not a significant correlation. This is very small. Um, another quick thing, if you're doing other types of data, you can do a Spearman correlation coefficient, a Kendall's tau, et cetera. Sorry about the little thing on the screen. If you're not sure which one, one neat thing to do is click on the Help menu, and then it will tell you on the side what the assumptions for uh, each of these tests is. So for the Pearson co coefficient, you've got to have continuous variables. If you're going to do Spearman, here's what your assumptions are. And if you're going to do um, <clears throat> some of the other ones, they should be here as well. Let's see, Kindle's Tau down here. This will tell you some things as well. So the help menu is, is really nice there. So anyway, that's how you find uh, a correlation in JASP. So stay tuned for more tips and tricks on JASP, and I'll see you next time.